Hey friends, I am sitting outside because I think we've been seeing enough <laughs> living rooms and dining room tables and um, it's a beautiful day so hopefully you guys can still hear me despite there's a little bit of a wind but I'm gonna enjoy sitting outside while I talk to you. So I had a big moment yesterday when I talked to one of my CEO clients and we were talking about, you know, how do you survive this as a business? And not just survive in it, but thrive in it. And what are some of the things that you can do right now to actually benefit from this season of opportunity? And that's what I'm going to start calling it. Because while, and I'm going to get so much flack for this, but I'm going to say it anyway, because that's what I do. While this is going to be disastrous for many, many, many people there is a tremendous opportunity for many others. So um, while we can only focus on mitigating the problem, the other thing we wanna make sure is that we take advantage of as much opportunity as we can. Because as we all know, small businesses need to be dialed in 100% in the good times to really work and be profitable. And most of the people I know have small businesses. I mean, if you're anywhere under 250 employees, this is for you, this is what I'm talking about. Or even a thousand employees. Every single person on our team needs to be 100%, like the best person in the role right now. You can, we can't tolerate having anybody on the team anymore who is not 100%. So one of the things we were talking about yesterday is this is really the perfect time to look at first, of course, making sure that your product or your service is dialed in the best way possible so you can make sure that you're relevant to your clients right now. How can you help them in this tragedy right now so that they can thrive, that they can make it, that they can benefit, whatever it is. but making sure hey Alessandra making sure that they're good that they have everything you can help them with so so that of course is step one and then when we're talking about the team like I said before it is incredibly important that every single person on your team is optimized in what they're doing and you're giving them the structures so they can do a really really good job but that's only one piece so you can and that is, I mean, I'm going to preface this with saying this, all, everything I'm going to say later needs to be grounded on that you've already done the best job possible to make the environment successful so people actually can be successful, right? So you've given them the right objectives and outcomes and opportunities and the support that they need to do a really, really good job. You've, uh, you've given them utmost clarity about what's expected of them what success looks like and how you're going to support them and how they can get support if um, if it's not support they're already having. You have stellar communication so people can actually use you as a leader and you're supporting them emotionally, mentally and in every way possible through these, through these rough times because everybody is having to pivot, everybody is having to figure out how to survive this. So I'm going to, this is, this is what we're going to come to the opportunity with. So you've already supported your team as much as possible. And then the next point is, once you've done that as a leader, it is your responsibility to look at your team. And I make this a practice anyway, and this is very unpopular. And a lot of times people have a lot of resistance to that because where's the loyalty? But what I'm talking about is, especially right now, you have to make the very best decisions for the health of your company. And this is going to go to all right even in the best of times we want to use this practice of top grading which means you're going to look at your team every three months and you're going to look at who are the bottom 20 percent and those are probably not your a players and you want to build this team of a players only so your bottom 20 percent need to go and there's no sugar coating no better way to say that but as a small business, you cannot afford to drag along a ball and chain, somebody who's not performing, somebody who you've already given all the support to and they're still not coming up. And this is, again, I'm gonna keep emphasizing, you as a leader have already done everything to make possible 
that they come up, that they become A players. But if it's just not happening, despite all the support you've given them, you need to let go of that 20%. And so you'll have 80% left of those 80%, 20% are your A players and they're great and you don't have to worry about them. They're gonna do their thing. And the 60% in the middle are kind of on a scale and you're gonna to have to keep an eye on how they're going. But so as we're engaging in this practice of top grading, it is really important that you define who those 20% are consistently and you let them go so that you can rehire 20% of people who are much better than the 20% that you let go, which when you do that consistently, it keeps up leveling your team and it keeps giving you an opportunity as a business to have much better results, not just business-wise, but also to keep cultivating the culture that you want, to keep dialing in your product more because you're getting better talent and people who can bring more to the team. So there's so many opportunities. I mean, so many younger CEOs or younger leaders, younger, not age-wise, but you know, less experienced, think that it's all about their leadership or the product, but it's just so not true. Where it really becomes essential is, is like what people are you bringing to the table who can really provide more value than you can. So right now the ugly opportunity is there are a lot of people who are getting released, laid off from their current jobs. And so we have more unemployed people hitting the market than we ever had. So if you have a team of people who, when you take a look at them and you find that you have junior people on your team who you're paying quite a bit of money right now and they're not up to the job yet, this may be the time to decide that, especially right now where you need the best people on your team, that they're not the right people to keep on the bus especially when you're having an incoming flood of really experienced senior people who are really good at what they're doing, who you could probably have for the same price. So the ugly opportunity is you can let go of people who you're paying a bunch of money who are not that great, and you can get people on board who may be better. And um, maybe for the same price. So this is a really important time to recognize this opportunity and make some decisions that are really important for the survival of your business. And while that sounds maybe cold-hearted or not loyal, or I know how much flack I'm gonna get for this, you have to think about the health of your business in the long term. Because if you can survive this, you can survive anything. And you're also making this decision for the rest of your team, for the rest of your company, for the health of your company going forward. So. It is not an emotional decision. It is really a decision around how can you upgrade this consistently so that you can make your business the best performing team you could ever have had. And yes, consistently, it will require you to be an incredible leader. And that's another story. But let's make sure that while you're leading, you have, you know, I'm always talking about the four things. You gotta make sure that you have the right product, that it's dialed in, that it's lean, that it's tight, that it's exactly hitting the need of your market. So that is, you know, for right now, got to make that product as relevant as you can. Second thing being, you got to make sure you have the right system so you can support your people to really be rock stars, to be amazing at what they do, that they get everything they need, that they have clarity and that they can deliver. And then the third one being the people, being the right people, because Sometimes they're great at what they do and they're still not the right people. And sometimes they are the right people, but they're not great at what they do. So in that respect, you always think you can do, will do, team fit. And then the fourth thing, of course, is leadership. And that is you. This is, and that's um, never changes. That is one of the biggest challenges going forward. It requires the right support, the right systems, the right communication, and also becoming a coach. And this is one of my other clients came to that realization yesterday. It's like, if I want to upgrade my team, I have to become a better coach because right now we have all the other things in place. We have a great product that's tight and the market needs it. We have incredibly good people who are in the right spots. We have the right systems that supports everything. 
but now I just have to show up as the one who keeps consistently challenging people who are on board with me and I can be the coach to them that gets them to that next level. So you might want to think about that whether you have one team member or no team members and you're wanting to hire soon but even if you have a tiny team or a team of 20 or 50 this is the time to really look at this who are the right people who you really want to keep because they're the right team fit they're the right skill set fit and they are consistently up leveling their game without you having to push them and who's just kind of along for the ride and ready to get a paycheck whenever um, it's that time and those are tough decisions to make and I never take that lightly and I know for a lot of you especially if you have family businesses this is a really tough thing to think about but I want to just encourage you to keep thinking about the long-term health of your business and what that means to the rest of the people who are in your team with you so hope this helps hope this resonates if you have any more questions you can always PM me and um, I'd always recommend go to our free training bulletproofstartups.com there are a lot of really really good insights in there that you can really benefit from anyway you guys stay safe out there make sure you encourage others to stay safe and I will talk to you soon